All right, three, two, one. But that was louder than I thought. <laughs> Hi, I am Jess, also known as Scribbles and Skeptics in this channel. As you may know, that's actually how you pronounce it. <laughs> and here I am today. I want to record this video to show some of my uh, the updates and the changes, uh, just to let people know how Recursive Tale came to be. Recursive Tale, it is an alternate universe, originally called as Grown Up Tale because uh, I want to, the, the universe, like the alternate universe, this entire thing started because I have, I have the thought of what ifs in like questions five years ago, I think. Originally, Grown Up Tale, uh, this universe, uh, after it created, and then later on, I had a story about it. It was all written in DeviantArt before, and then later I deleted it because I felt like I just don't know what to do with it. And I don't know when, some kind of year later, out of boredom, search my own username. And then I found out that Google has still has some records on how on the AU grown up tale. So, and then it just. And then because I start to miss it, uh, and then I redrew a picture of Grown Up Tale Rotis, and then I started to uh, plan to make an animation of the whole story of Grown Up Tale, and it was successful so far for the prologue, that is. But while I was making an episode one, uh, my flash drive broke, and I have lost all motivation on it because I've lost all the files. <laughs> and five years later, we come back here, uh, and because I was, I felt like I was finally ready. I know how I want the story to go, and I just want to remaster it. I I don't know, remake it, remaster it, uh, to make not only change the name to Recursive Tale, but also updating the story to make it more, uh, more story-like. According to the old journal from my DeviantArt, I have, um, th this is what the story originally was gonna be. It is called Apologies About Grown Up Tale AU, and it was made in September 23rd, 2018. And that was, uh, after I, uh, I lost my, all my stuffs, all the animations, and then I just want to, I still want to, uh, reveal the story anyway, so I just wrote it all down, which is a good plan, but also not a good one. It's good because now I can, like, compare how Recursive Tale is to Grown Up Tale now, uh, to Recursive Tale is now to how Grown Up Tale is before, and how edgy it can be. So the story started in the sunset, and, uh, Rodas told Frizz that you need to promise me not to reset again, and boy oh boy what happened, Frizz broke the promise, and that's why it was called a broken promise before. And then after it is reset, the timeline reset, it, uh, this whole place, they, 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 all the monsters went back into the underground and they live out their normal lives. And, uh, it was not clearly explained as well, like, why does it have a glitch right in the middle of a forest? And, uh, Rodas tried to touch it. Uh, okay, let's see. From the last page, Rodas and Sator found a glitch in the middle of Snowden Forest. Rodas approached to it, got attacked by it when he thinks it's nothing, gave him a few hints on how he will look in the future. He passed out and saw Frisk resetting, which it did happen. He woke up again with the same dialogue center waking him up and Papyrus rushed through the door to wake Sans up and also Rotis. Rotis asked Sans what happened when he and Papyrus found him struggling to stand up and ended up passing out. Sans can't recall completely and they both knew Frisk did a reset. Papyrus wanted to go out to Snowden Forest and prepare puzzles for them again, the Rose starts to worry and decide to ask whether if they would like to hang out and walk around just the three of them. Papyrus strongly agreed and they did. So that's what originally happened, but I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> After they came back, a nice sitter made a suggestion of making a mark somewhere visible to prove that the timeline did reset it, so Rodas did it on the ceiling, the first thing he sees whenever he wakes up. See, here's the thing that is still, uh, the elements of the story still in there, uh, that is giving, making a mark on any wall so that uh, they would know if the timeline reset it. But this time it is not Sator's suggestion, it is Rhoda's uh, suggestion. 
no suggestion. He just thought about it, and he he did it. Next morning, same dialogue on how Senator Rogue rose up, and the mark on the ceiling is gone. The whole thing mostly continued every day, and Rose kept counting it down. There is a day where the mark is still there, but the dialogue of what Papyrus says are completely the same. The mark started counting how many how many times it had reset is almost all over Rose's room, and he started to panic when he counted it was more than a hundred. He left messages using Sense Radio, where he could message Chris, kept asking why he's resetting, what he do wrong, etc. This is the part where I feel like it just doesn't make sense. Like, how would Chris be able to listen to the radio? Like. There, there's this thing where I don't understand how the radio works and what radio, like, <laughs> what, what is that? Rose starts to fall into deep depression and constant panic attacks. There are days where he woke up and saw glitches everywhere and went black again and back to where he was sleep asleep again. Those constant glitches and resets starts to fall apart and our sense doesn't remember resets anymore. Satoru's appearance starts to change, clothing are ripped, Crest starts to form even more and his legs are disappearing. Sense doesn't remember resets. This part is still present because it was like the main part of Rhodes' mental health like and because he starts to feel alone that uh, even Sense doesn't remember anymore when Sense was like the only one that they can connect to the most because they both are aware of the timeline but now even Sense is gone he just starts to feel more alone and then uh, he just feel like nobody can help him anymore and that's where his like depressing state starts like so the element of sense forgetting to reset is still there where Satoru's experience to change is like uh i did make the element that uh before even this au existed is that Satoru's appearance uh actually reflects on how rodas will look like in the future so uh he is I, we can still see a little bit only, but uh, yeah, I didn't really keep that in for saying, oh, Satoru is slowly starting to disappear because I don't, I don't feel like it can be explained very soon. <laughs> Here we go. Trigger warning, by the way, uh, for self-harm and all those stuff because edgy me. We started to harm himself because the scars will be gone the next day anyway. But it didn't and the reset never happened again. The last time Sans and Papyrus ever saw their broken brother coming out of this room is after Papyrus tried to hug him but he ended up running back to his room and never come out again. Papyrus with tears asked for Sans what did he do wrong to Rotus. The monster in the garden ground would visit Rotus as well giving him the best wishes. Rotus kept turning them down telling them to go away and accidentally hurting more of them not just in Dine and Elphys. Whew! In Dine and Elphys they were never in a recursive tale at all. The element of knowing that if he got hurt it would be disappearing the next day anyway that element is still there but it's not as edgy as in oh I hurt myself like intentionally in some some places he actually accidentally hurt himself like he cut himself when he was making some food there is a part where Rose came back from Groovy's bar and he got a fight with someone well it wasn't really seen very clearly at all but uh, that's just what it is in that scene. He came back from Grubby's bar, he got beaten up because he is that you know, he's at some weird things and just pissed off some monsters. <laughs> and he doesn't really, you know, do the self-defense thing. And Satoru just took over and then um defend him helped defend himself. So yeah, that's how he got hurt. But um he's still smiling because he felt like, you know what? This this, it will all be gone anyway. They won't remember who I am anyway because it's all gonna reset anyway. That's just that's just his mentality uh, in that scene. Satoru so tried his best to make Rodas sane again, but he failed and instead made Rodas feel like he's hearing voices and accidentally smashed the mirror, shouting, get out of my head. Satoru so paused for a moment, shed his last black tear, and disappeared with a smile. Now that, this part is the only part that I kept because it is like the main thing that is that happened um, when I create the Grown Up Tale AU. Like that part is is considered the the main climax and the uh, what is that iconic? <laughs> is it iconic? I no, that's not the word for it. Basically, this is like this part has never uh, went out of the main plot because Grown Up Tale is a recursive tale. It just changes name and. But to uh, make let people know that the two a 
that is still grown up tail in there, I keep this part because this part is the breaking point for roses? I don't know. I, I still don't have knowledge on the words and the vocabulary for it. So I hope you know what I mean. <laughs> Rodas woke up finding himself on the floor, filled with shattered glass from the mirror. He called for Sator, there was no response, but the slight flashed back on what he did and he quickly felt guilty for letting Sator leave him. It was years later and fi Rodas finally got out of his room, Sans and Papyrus of course, extremely delighted to see him out. Sans kept asking why Rodas locked himself, which Rodas confused on how Sam seems like he had no idea what had happened. He took him several private, away from Paris, telling him about recess and timelines, but Sans doesn't really seem to recall at all. Rose starts to shout at him about everything Sans was new in the past, but doesn't recall either. Rose ran out of ideas to make him remember, so he finished the conversation with, Never mind, I'm still not quite back on track yet, leaving Sans still confused and more concerned. Now this part uh, also changed, yeah, of course, because if you see in the trailer, um, you know what happened. Everyone in Snowden was delighted to hear Rose is back on track. No, no one's delighted actually. That's to hear that the Queen Tutorial Queen Tutorial, yes, of course. Eleven escorted suicides from a broken heart. Now that is not that that does not kept it in because that just just sounds bad. <laughs> I feel with confidence that Rose would make a good king to rule the underground, but Rose rejected it. Now here's the thing that doesn't make sense either. Why would people want to let Rodas be the good be a king and even think that he would be a good king at all when in the past he was just pushing away everyone and almost hurting everyone. <laughs> That's the part that just feels off and wrong. Saying Papyrus would be better than him, saying he's more sane, mature than Rovis is, as Romus will still remain as the sentry. You heard monsters talking about humans will be coming to set them free, leading them to break a pencil with one grip, selling on his table saying don't even mention about them. Where did the pencil come from? Who knows? As he was leaving, Monster Kid came by to greet him. When he talked about humans again, Rose snapped and accidentally slashed his eye. He apologized and walked with guilt. Help his manager heal with Monster Kid's eye. Okay. I guess that's it. <laughs> Rose graduated from university and was about to move apartments until he was finding his old shirt. Remember the amount of times he reset just to stop time and give him more time to study and get better grades. But totally forgot the promise he made with Roses before his first reset. Okay. Old shirt. But. How would he? A how would they be able to wear it again, when it's been like twenty years or so? I don't know for this timeline. He's still able to wear his old shirt. Okay, <clears throat> all right then. Thinking he should visit and free the monsters on that day. When he arrived, he expected to see the mania Flowey once again, but turns out Flowey was withered and buried underneath the bed of flowers. So he headed on to the rooms where all the puzzles were turned off, so he passed it quicker than before. It was until he reached Snowden Forest, he expected to e see either Rodas or Sans approaching from behind, ready to give a handshake, went to the gate and saw someone standing there, facing the other way. Tokyo, long enough to come back. Frizz was shocked with guilty when he saw what had happened to the used to be calm and brotherly Rodas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Frizz tried apologizing, but Rose had enough of forgiving him. Lucky enough, you won't have a bad time from Sans because he made him forget everything. Yeah, alright. Frizz bypassed every monster ever, counting, uh, countering Rose and Sans. You can tell everything changed ever since he left the underground for a long period of time. As you reached your judgment hall, it was not Sans who was standing there, it was Rodas. As, as if they changed personalities and jobs. Frizz remembered Rodas never really fought with them in both pacifist and genocide roles. But Rodas started a real fight, worse than a nightmare, worse than the time he faced Sans. Now, I didn't do that part because that just shows. Because I really still want Rodas to have, like, he still cares about Frizz, but he's, he's slightly blinded with. Uh, hatred, but he's but like he's still in there, d uh, feeling bad that I don't really want to kill him yet. Plus, I can't really make a good fight scene. I can't do it yet. It was not that epic, but uh, still has some little ooh, hurts and bumpies. <laughs> Rose finally kneeled down, feeling weak after Frisk giving mercy to him more than thirty times. Wow, okay. <laughs> he finally forgives Frizz that he get past and free them all with just one greeting with King Papyrus. Uh Cause I wanna show like he is Rodis Rodis, that is. Rodis isn't full hasn't fully forgiven Frizz. And I wanna make like like I wanna seem like he still doesn't like what he what Frizz has done. And their relationship is a little complicated now, even after the end of everything. You can still tell Rose still cares about them, 
but he's still and he's trying his he's try he will try to forgive them it's kind of like the ending of uh how ellie and joe in the last of us part two where ellie was like well i can't forgive you for what you've done but i will try as the monsters left to live a new life on the surface once again frisk talk with rodas for a bit and let him be alone Rose sat on the car ground and thinking about what he did and sincerely apologized to his missing doppelganger and supporter. Sidor came back, sitting beside them with a less broken look, but the clothing is still is the same as Rose is wearing now. He had forgiven him and Rose is finally able to be sane once again. <laughs> I word it though. Rose is finally able to be sane once again. So that's how the story changes. You can see it was less edgy. I keep some elements in and I leave out some of the things out to make it less, uh, make it more make sense and less edgy. <laughs> I mean, in still some parts, there, there is still some edginess to it because, uh, well, the main element of Rhoda's breaking the mirror and telling Sator to go away is still an edgy thing and <laughs> that, that's all there is. I think the main like like i said before i made a major mistake uh when i first make the uh animation is that um i already revealed how everything is going to be designed <laughs> i also received some questions so here's another here's one question so flowey or asriel will probably stay probably stay forever as a flower well you know what i never thought about that <laughs> whoops um yeah they asriel would would stay as a flower forever because the element of flowey not appearing anymore because uh it's been a while since Ascor has been taking care of them so yeah for for them to be withered and not be seen again would be what makes sense i guess <laughs> I, I i never thought about that whoops i'm curious is the old man on thir three minute 52 is that the man in one of the comics who adopted rodas after the war between the humans and monsters is he the old man who are those two people rodas was wait originally grown tail wasn't wasn't i didn't never thought about it at all but uh recursive tail i want it to make have a connection with the ludicrous comic which is the comic about rhodes's past life and how he knew how the service looked like before going back to the underground so yeah because i wanted to make a connection that recursive tale is with ludicrous i added in the characters in ludicrous comic and the two people that you see uh the two humans that is is thomas and also carl which are the human brothers like foster families i there is a there's a name for that i i'm not sure if it's foster family they're the uh the brothers and of the family where they are required to take care of rotus before executing rotus in the comic i showed that people kidnap rotus because the monsters killed the sheeps uh son they they only do that as, as in like you killed my son i'm gonna take one of your monsters and people uh somehow found rodas because he was the closest and they they captured him and then yeah thinking executing them like saying that it was fair and square in the end they didn't execute him because the chief got a closer look on roses and found out that rose was pretty similar to his son so he he just can't do it <laughs> so basically thomas and carl are like brothers to roses plus they have personalities of sans and papyrus if you look closely enough it, it's like if papyrus likes saying puns and that is carl and for for thomas you can imagine he's just like Rodas are sans, but he doesn't. He isn't really a fond of puns, but it just lets it be. Like lets Carl, he, he just lets Carl uh, talk whatever he wants, <laughs> if that makes him happy. So why not? For the characters, I would say Rodas and Sans were the only ones, and also Sator actually. They were the only ones who kept the main elements on how they would look like. Rodas is the first character I designed. Uh, when I was making Grown Up Tale, and like I, I kept how he, how he's gonna look because it's his iconic look, and since this iconic fur little thing, uh, fur little hoodie jacket, and also Papyrus, uh, is is still gonna be the king anyway because 
of his actions because Sator has the like canon element of、uh, reflecting on how Rodas would look like in the future, so he still kept the、uh, he still has this look. Wears the similar thing on what Rodas would wear, and.、Uh, The cracks on their eyes are also the same. If you if you look into it, I think it was their left eye. Yeah, the left eye, the crack is still the same. So here's a comparison on the both of them. First of all, the white hair streaks on on Rhoda's hair is less、uh, randomness because back then it was just random little white streaks on the hair, which、um, I know what I'm trying to go for back then. It was like trying to、uh, emphasize the fact there was actual little streaks of hair. But if I'm trying to animate it, that's gonna that's gonna be torturous. You just imagine every time he moves, and then the little streaks like, you know, you know that thing. So I made it actual like just one little one single streak on it to、uh, make it easier for it to animate and more easy to be、uh, less random, so that、uh, it would be more. It just goes with the flow better instead of. Getting distracted by whatever randomness just happened in the character model, and also the palette, the color palette are much more lighter, because like in the Grown Up Tale version, you can see how dark it is. You can't really see the the light parts. The only light parts are his hair,、um, his face, arms, and neck, and also the sleeves on his. Blouse thing. I never actually know what that is, but I made it have it more contrast. Well, for the pants and shoes, they're like still very similar, but、uh, I have more colors, like the same palette as each other, so that it would be like make the workflow much more easier and faster because less color to color pick on and throw it into the drawing. Now it just looks more pleasant to look at if you look at it. <laughs> I also have like some colors where they connect each other. Well, I actually forget which part. I'm not sure if Sans and Rodas have the same color palette in some ways. I I actually don't know. <laughs> I think it was the same color palette as how they like the how the how their younger version look. I I think that's the only same color. But then I don't think they have colors where they actually connect to each other other than just white. <laughs> the cracks you can see the cracks are less like. Like I made less cracks on Rose's face, and and also no cracks for Papyrus because、uh, there is no way Rose would want to hurt Papyrus. I forgot to mention that eye bags indicate that the character is aware of time loops. So yep, Sans lost his eye bags, and also that broken eye in Rose's, and and it just doesn't make sense. Like what is that? <laughs> it still doesn't make sense for the character as well because I don't think. Their eyes are actual skulls, like little balls in there that could fall off. They're actually just light. So yeah, that's the thing. Paris's like king costume. I want to make him actually look like a king, rather than still reusing the elements that that shows that he is. Whew, I don't know. Him still having the battle body color palette makes it seem like. He's still playing around, you know. So if I gave him actual armor, that it just makes him more look more badass. But even though he doesn't get much screen time, like near the end, it was just like a few seconds of footage to show his entire design. But like, yeah, that's just how he looks like now. <laughs> as much as I hate it, but I still add some patterns for his uh, royal uh, armor. Because if if I didn't add any patterns on there, it just doesn't feel like a, what a king would wear. So I had to add some patterns, even though it's oh, it's it's the it's it's a lot of things. I I kept it as simplified as usual as as I as I can. So it's not that bad. Here's Fritz. He looks weird. <laughs> like what kind of shirt is that? Why would you wear it? As a reunion, you know. So I actually just like throw away the the old shirt because I doubt anyone would keep such an old shirt that you wear as a seven year old kid. 
because I'm sure when as you grow up, you you clean your drawer and it's like I'm not gonna wear this anymore and just throws it away. So I just give him a a shirt that an adult would actually wear. And in this case, if he's a businessman, I I feel like he would like wearing some polo shirts, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> At first, I didn't really know what kind of hairstyle I'm going for, for, but as I keep drawing, I realize how much he looks like Leon. <laughs> Sadly, Elvis and Undyne wasn't present in the uh, in this current recursive tale AU. Grown-up tail was named as grown-up tail because the monsters have grown up and Frizz has grown up. So I was like, you know what? Just call it grown-up tail. Why the hell not? But now, because I want the name to have a correlation, a connection to the entire story as a whole, I think that the whole story is solely all talking about recess and loops and all those stuffs before and I went ahead and searched fear of loops <laughs> and then the first the vocabulary recursion came out because recursion is like a cold thing I don't know so originally it was like okay good name recursion tale why, why not but then as I keep going like making the prologue for it I, re I realized that hmm maybe I should highlight the words that you so people could see reset the acronym inside and but then ah recursion recursion tail is left uh doesn't have an e in it, it so it can only spell out r e s and t but there's no e in the middle for recursion tail and then i keep searching for like another uh word that could have the same meaning but also can make out the acronym for reset like r e s e t and then i found that oh recursive is a thing like the the word is a thing, so I use recursive tail. And there it is, R-E-S-E-T. <laughs> and that's how I managed to name it as recursive tail. And then I put it into a, um, as the trailer for it. And that's how it all started. Oh yeah, look at this, it's Rodus' room. <laughs> you, you can tell how much I've grown to know how to use colors. Cause, okay. <laughs> I wanted to make a room where Rodus can actually, uh, that actually looked feels and looks like Rotis, so I use mainly blue kind of palette to it. But then in the old version, you can see it's so fucking dark. So I remade it to make it more brighter a little bit and more sunshiny feel to it. Because the walls are too dark, Rotus putting marks on the wall could be you could be able to. Yeah, I, I highly doubt Rotus could see the marks he made on the wall if the walls are this dark. And it just makes it more comfortable, you know, like an actual room. Overall, I'm really proud of what I did for the uh, for the animation. I mean, I could have done better in some episodes, but for now, I'm not in the place to judge because <laughs> I, I only recently finished Made It, like last month. It's December now, and I finished it in November something. October, actually. But uh, <laughs> you, you get what I mean. I feel like maybe if uh, it's an anniversary for uh, Grown Up Tell, a recursive tale actually if it's an anniversary for it i'll make a special video on me just re-watching the entire series again just so um i have a like i have a clear mind again on uh thinking what i what i want to change but i could say it now that i'm for now i'm the most proud of the animations in uh, episode 6 of course <laughs> i feel like i could do better well, I'm also proud of how episode 4 came out because uh, it was the iconic breaking point moment for the universe. I was proud of that on how I executed as well. It's such a pain in the ass to redraw the frame being like slow motion and float, you know? I think I could do better in the... Uh, well, now episode 5, I think. I could do better on how I, I, I honestly don't know. <laughs> also, if I have learned how useful symbols are in Ad Adobe Anime, I only learned how useful they are in only in episode 6. In the other moments where I'm always copying pasting the frame to make a jiggling effect for some of the for some of their uh, character moments, but I I completely 
like ignored how useful it can be to do that in symbols as well, where it just loops the loops the play inside within the frame. Like how useful was that? Which is good, I guess, because、uh, making animation is where I start to learn how some of the effects can be made, where I start to learn how the program was made. And if in the future I ever need to do something similar like this again, I can always can always do that. I don't know if you can see the difference between the first time, like I made a video after episode one release, and now that I finished the animation, and also the、uh, the workload on university. Is there is there a difference on my eyes on and how I look like right now? <laughs> the main only difference is that. Seasons change, and I'm wearing big jackets to keep myself warm. I still like the scarf. Thank you, Choi. <laughs> feel like I would see a comparison very soon when I edit the video. <laughs> I I just really wanted to talk about Recursive Tales so much, like on how much changes that made, and how proud that I. Proud I am to be able to actually finish it, and thank you for my flash drive to not break on me. Well, it's not a flash drive; it's an external drive. I'm so glad the external drive didn't break on me. Still working well to be able to keep all of my、uh, documents and、uh, files, anime files, After Effects and Premiere Pro files in one in one folder. This went through went to the end. As tiring as it is. On making the recursive tale animation series,、um, I will miss those days where I, like, where I animate them. I'm just really proud of myself, <laughs> and I'm sure、uh, five years ago, me seeing myself now being able to actually finish the story that I've always wanted to make,、uh, I'm sure they'll be proud of me as well. <laughs> they they will fucking freak out if they see that. Oh my god! I can actually animate that. So like, I can actually animate this much, and I can draw backgrounds, and I could have use、uh, different types of sound design to bring up the atmosphere, and could even search for music that actually fits the mood of the entire animation. Wow! <laughs> If I could make music, it would be better, but I I can't. So I had to find some music that I think it would fit. To、um, put it on the animation and to you know feel the mood of it, like it kind of it kind of does reflect the mood on the situation on how the character is feeling while the music is playing and while you look at the screen. Can you can you tell that I'm starting to deteriorate? Like I'm starting to feel more tired as as the time goes on talking to this video. Boy, am I old. <laughs> One thing I do hope is that. I I hope people don't compare this mini series, like this indie mini series, to some other people, to some other indie animators who are making a series as well. Like, I know I draw pretty fast. Like here's an actual live footage of me animating the the all of the frames and coloring them. But uh, like I know I draw very fast. I really do hope that. It was just a unique thing for me, but I do hope you you can compare. Like, if I draw very fast, this is the outcome. And for people who made it in one year for one episode that is twenty something minutes, like I hope you can compare like the big difference that is. Like, I hope I don't get compared too much in the, because I work. I'm just I'm just someone who can work fast.、But、that doesn't mean that everyone can do it. I just I just hope I don't become this, uh, pinnacle or like the. The, the target that people need to follow. That is the, like, I just hope I don't get compared as the best. There is something I can actually do much better in the animation if I spend more time on it, but I didn't because I'm lazy. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If there's any more related on recursive tale videos,、um, I will try my best to do it. But、uh, for this channel is starting to to be dead because. There's just not much ideas for me to do, but if you still want me to see creating content, you can always just go over to my gaming channel because that is more active than in this channel. <laughs> Thank you for your support on the、um, on the series as well, and for it to be successfully finished in just six episodes, nothing else. Goodbye. <laughs>